environmental signals influence the circadian system by affecting the suprachiasmatic nucleus, or the SCN. The SCN is a small cluster of brain cells that act as the central pacemaker. For example, the SCN receives direct light input from the retina to track the alternations of day-night cycles. In its role as the pacemaker, the SCN then sends signals to other oscillators in the body and drives physiological rhythms, like hormone release and body temperature, and behavioral rhythms, like feeding and sleep-wake cycles. In this video, we will review some foundational experiments performed in hamsters that were crucial to understanding the SCN's functions as the central pacemaker. First, a disclaimer. Scientists performing these experiments made sure that as few animals as possible were used, that their level of discomfort was minimal, and that these experiments were important to advance our understanding of biology and human health. The experiments we review in this video involved an interesting line of rodents named the Tau mutant hamster. The Tau mutant hamster has the same appearance as a wild type hamster, but here we distinguish the Tau mutant by coloring it blue. The Tau mutant has an altered gene for casein kinase 1, or CK1, and this was the first clock gene mutant strain ever described in any vertebrate. A hamster with the Tau mutation shows a shortened free running period, which we can see by comparing its actogram to that of a normal hamster. In a normal or wild type hamster, the free running period is usually a little longer than 24 hours. A homozygous tau mutant hamster has two alleles that are mutated and has a very short free running period of approximately 20 hours. A heterozygous tau mutant hamster with one mutated allele and one wild type allele shows an intermediate free running period near 22 hours. While the experiments we discussed were performed in both heterozygous and homozygous tau mutants, here we will set aside homozygous tau mutants and focus only on the heterozygous tau mutant hamsters. In this video, we will discuss two kinds of experimental methods using tau mutant hamsters that helped establish the SCN as the mammalian pacemaker. Both involved lesioning of the SCN in one animal. Two different kinds of transplant experiments were also performed using different methods to transplant SCN cells. One way to explore the different functions of the brain is to destroy or lesion a portion and observe what functions are compromised. This enables us to determine whether the lesion brain area is necessary for some function. In this case, the researchers were testing the hypothesis that an intact SCN is necessary for behavioral rhythmicity in mammals. Lesion experiments destroy brain tissue in a targeted area. The method used in our case is called electrolytic lesioning, in which strong electrical current is applied to destroy the tissue of a targeted brain area, rendering that part of the brain non-functional. The targeted brain area was the SCN. Electrodes were lowered into the brain so that the uninsulated exposed tip of the electrode rested against the SCN. When electrical current was applied, the cells between the tips of the electrodes were destroyed, while the rest of the brain remained intact. Since the animals were anesthetized and there are no nociceptors in the brain, lesioning does not cause pain. In this experiment, researchers examined the effects of SCN lesions on hamster behavioral rhythms. As shown in this first actogram, before the lesion, the wild-type animal has its usual free-running period of about 24 hours. Next, researchers lesion the SCN of this hamster, which we denote SCNX. After a thorough lesion of the SCN, the animal's rhythms were completely gone. It showed no rhythmicity in constant conditions. The SCNX animal still engaged in its normal behaviors like eating and running on the wheel, but didn't perform these activities at any specific time every day or in any regular pattern. In contrast, consider what would happen in a control. The experiment begins with a wild-type hamster as before. But in this sham lesion condition, although the electrodes are still inserted and positioned near the SCN, no current is applied, so the SCN is not lesioned. The sham lesioned animal still shows a robust free-running circadian rhythm of activity. So, simply undergoing the surgery and electrode placement is not enough to affect circadian rhythms. The SCN must be destroyed for rhythmicity to be abolished. Basic lesion experiments thus suggested that SCN is necessary to generate behavioral rhythmicity because lesioning the SCN renders the hamster behaviorally arrhythmic. But these data do not show exactly why the SCN is necessary. These data are consistent with two possibilities. 
First, it could be that the SCN is only an important part of the pathway from the core clock to behavioral output. In that case, SCN lesioning would decouple behavior from the clock, but the clock might still be keeping time. Second, it could be that the SCN is itself the core pacemaker, and that without it, the animal is not capable of circadian rhythmicity at all. Additional experiments were required to address why the SCN is necessary. The breakthrough experiment for showing that the SCN is the core circadian pacemaker came from extending the basic lesion experiments by adding a new manipulation, SCN transplants. In the first transplant experiment we will discuss, researchers sought to test the hypothesis that the SCN is the core pacemaker and actually determines the period of behavioral rhythmicity in mammals. Transplant experiments involve at least two animals, a host and a donor. First, researchers lesion the SCN of the host animal, as before. Next, they remove SCN tissue from the donor animal and insert it into the brain of the host animal. This is done by placing the donor SCN tissue into the bottom of the third ventricle, very near the original location of the SCN. In the crucial transplant experiments, researchers relied on the fact that, thanks to the tau mutation, they had hamster strains with different circadian periods. Remember, a heterozygous tau mutant hamster has a short free-running period of about 22 hours, in contrast to the wild type's roughly 24-hour period. The first crucial experiment was performed as follows. Step 1. Disable the SCN of the tau mutant hamster with an electrolytic lesion. This makes the hamster behaviorally arrhythmic. Step 2. Extract SCN tissue from the wild-type hamster. Step 3. Implant SCN tissue of the wild-type hamster into the lesioned SCN area of the tau mutant hamster. Step 4. Measure resulting rhythmicity. The results of this experiment are striking. We illustrate them using a heterozygous tau mutant host. Before the lesion, the tau mutant hamster had its intact SCN and showed behavioral rhythmicity with a short free-running period of about 22 hours. After the SCN lesion, the tau mutant hamster was arrhythmic. However, after transplantation of a wild-type SCN, the tau mutant host hamster regained rhythmicity. Importantly, its recovered rhythm was determined by the donor. The tau mutant showed the 24-hour period of a wild-type hamster. The same was true when the researchers reversed the relationship of donor and host. They took a wild-type animal, lesioned the SCN, then took the SCN tissue from a tau mutant donor and put it in the wild-type host. The patterns of rhythmicity through the phases of the experiment were very similar. Before lesion, the wild-type displayed its normal free-running period. After lesion, it was arrhythmic. After transplant, rhythmicity was recovered but with the tau mutant's short free-running period of 22 hours. This kind of recovery of rhythmicity is only observed when it is SCN tissue that is transplanted. Transplantation of any other kind of tissue is ineffective in restoring rhythmicity. To summarize the experiments discussed thus far, the lesion experiments show that the SCN is necessary for behavioral rhythmicity. Transplant experiments show that the SCN itself determines the period of behavioral rhythms. This strongly suggests that the SCN is itself the core pacemaker that schedules behavioral activity. An additional set of experiments investigated how the donor SCN cells in a transplant have this effect on the whole organism. The last experiment we will discuss was a variation on the transplant experiments. After the previous experiment, it was observed that very few new synaptic connections formed between donor tissue and the host SCN. In a new round of experiments, researchers sought to test the hypothesis that synaptic connections between SCN and the rest of the brain are not necessary for the SCN to determine the period of behavioral rhythmicity in mammals. In this modified transplant experiment, researchers first lesion the SCN as before. Next, they prepared to transplant SCN tissue from the donor. But first, they made a new manipulation. In the previous experiment, they put donor SCN tissue directly into the host brain, near the SCN. Under these conditions, it may be possible for the donor tissue to establish synaptic connections with the host cells. Now our researchers wanted to test whether new synaptic connections were really necessary for recovery of rhythmicity. 
To prevent new synaptic connections from forming before transplantations, the researchers put the donor tissue in a permeable capsule. This capsule is like a tiny meshwork pill filled with donor SCN tissue. The permeable capsule prevents the donor neurons from forming any new synaptic connections with the host, but permits diffusible signals and small molecules to pass from the donor tissue to the host. This experiment can test whether donor SCN cells restore the host's rhythms by forming new synaptic connections or not. If rhythmicity is still recovered under these conditions, then it does not depend on donor SCN cells forming new synaptic connections in the host, since the capsule prevents the formation of new synaptic connections. Researchers again relied on two hamster strains having different circadian periods. Here's the experiment and its results. They started with a heterozygous tau mutant hamster with its short 22-hour free-running period. They then disabled the SCN of the tau mutant hamster with an electrolytic lesion, which induced arrhythmicity. Next, they extracted SCN tissue from the wild-type hamster, put it in a permeable capsule, and implanted the whole capsule into the lesioned host near the site of the SCN via the third ventricle. Just like in the previous transplant experiment, the tau hamster regained rhythmicity, but now with the free-running period of the donor. The results showed that the donor SCN cells do not need to form synaptic connections to affect the whole organism's circadian period of behavioral rhythmicity. Small molecules and diffusible signals released by the SCN cells are sufficient to determine the behavioral rhythmicity of the whole animal. Similar experiments have since been carried out in mice and rats. The collective evidence from lesion and transplant studies demonstrates that in mammals, the SCN, all on its own, is sufficient to determine the period of behavioral rhythms. No other cells have been shown to play this unique role as a pacemaker in mammals, only the SCN. Mm -hmm.